Welcome to Slasher Sunday. So, I went on Amazon recently, as I normally do, looking for deals. And I came across Hellfest on Blu-ray for $5. It was $4.99 on Prime. And I was like, you know, a lot of my friends liked this one. And I didn't, you know, when it, when it had come out, I was pretty underwhelmed with it. Now, this came with a slew of movies like it. The whole haunted attraction is real thing has been a trope as of late, especially the year that this was released, where you had this, you had Haunt, you had American Fright Fest, you had the, um, what was that other one? the um oh there was hellfest american fright fest and another fest blood fest right blood fest i think that's what it was. there's just so fucking many of these um and yeah i was looking forward to this one it was directed by gregory plotkin who did ghost dimension paranormal activity the ghost dimension which i don't love but i like and I was really curious on what he was going to do with it. And I just left underwhelmed. And I was, you know, and then a bunch of friends of mine were like, oh, I dug the hell out of this and that. And I was like, dude, but it's a slasher film that's R-rated. And it has, like, no gore. It has no tits. The characters were blah to me. What's what's going on here? Like, what the fuck am I missing? So, I went back and I rewatched it tonight. Um... And I will say that I did I did quite enjoy it this time. I enjoyed it much more than I did the first time, no doubt. And I feel like I was being a little harsh. And I don't know what was happening. I don't know if my eyes were closed. But there is some gore in this movie. And it's actually rather good. It's not much. It's only two gore sequences. And, uh, and they're very, very short-lived. You know, for a second, we get a head smash with this big old mallet. And the guy's head fucking explodes. And that's pretty good. It's only, you know, it's a really fast, like, half second thing. And then you get the CG. It's a CG gore thing. But it's still pretty cool. The guy's eye. You get to see the needle go into his eye. And then the dude shoves the syringe right through his fucking head. It's pretty brutal. I mean, it's CG, so it's a little sh it's a little off, but you know what? I don't care. I got to see the syringe go straight into the eyeball and boom, be like smashed into the head. So, both of those gore gags alone, I was like, "Wow, okay. I was I was definitely being too harsh. This movie does have some gore and they were pretty cool kills. Everything else was you know, just kind of stabbings and not really all that interesting." So, I still think that this film should have had more kills and more gore. I'm not going to change my opinion on that. Um, that that is an issue with the film. This film should have this should have had let's we'll say at least four to five more kills on screen with good gore in them, and then I would have this much higher. I would be like, wow, this is a this is a pretty damn good slasher film. As far as the characters go, um, <clears throat> I didn't mind them this time. They're fairly stock. They're fairly generic. Um, there's nothing really separating them from any other slasher film that I've watched. So I can't really speak to the effect of that so much, but... I didn't dislike them either. They were adequate. They served their purpose. I liked them well enough to follow them on the journey, but I didn't like them enough to really care that much when they were in peril. Um, but as I said, I, I was still invested enough, just enough to get me through the story, if that makes any sense. So... I, yeah, <clears throat> characters, they're fine. The gore is fine. 
you know, it's, I, I had originally said it was terrible because there was none. Uh, I changed my tune on that, but it's still not great. Um, but I think where this film succeeds and I think where this film excels is in its production design. And what I think is so great about the production design is that this is set in a large haunted attraction, right? Hellfest. And Hellfest is a theme park, a horror theme park that comes up during Halloween, something like Not Scary Farm. And if you've been to Not Scary Farm, you know how elaborate it can be and how awesome it can be. So this is not far-fetched by any stretch of the imagination. And that's just it. It really utilizes this premise and it showcases it and it does a very good job of doing so it uses great lighting lots of neons very giallo kind of coloring at times which is which is always a great and a big plus for me but also the film feels like you're always there and the film is set at Hellfest 90 fucking 5% of the movie which is fantastic like please do that like if you're gonna make the movie Hellfest let's spend the majority of the time of the movie at Hellfest so good good there um, it's not like they get to Hellfest in the last 20 minutes of the movie that shit happens and it's frustrating so we do spend almost the entire film in Hellfest um, I always feel like I'm in a theme park nothing ever feels exaggerated or over the top to me. There's too many times, and I think it was that Bloodfest movie, if I remember correctly. I never did see the American Fright Fest one, but Bloodfest, I'm, I'm like 99% sure that's the title. Um, that shit got way out of control. Like, the whole the whole haunt, like everything, it, it was just way too elaborate, way too expensive, way too extravagant. It's just, it's too fucking much. This is like perfectly grandiose like it is big it is elaborate but it's realistically elaborate and the way that they showcase things and the way that they show things and and uh and the way they and like probably 50 percent of the movie is just them walking around in a haunted attraction and seeing all of these different elaborate set pieces that were designed for the movie and they all look like legit high-end haunts D shot very well so that right there for me is what elevated this film to something that I was like oh I like this and especially with the blu-ray the blu-ray is beautiful the transfer on this is fantastic um, so it's a great looking, great looking film. And I just feel like any of these haunted attraction movies, they just don't focus enough on the attractions and, and they either go too little with them or they go too much. And, it, and it's just so unbelievable, so outrageous that you're like, okay, this is kind of taking me out of the movie. Nothing could be this, I, the, nothing could be this insane. It would cost $1,000 a person. You know, or if it could even be done at all. So that's really where I'm at on this film with, with the whole like changing my tune on it is I was able to just sit back and really enjoy the production value, the production design, should I say. And the production value as well. The film looks fantastic. The film feels very theatrical. It feels big. And I love that about it. Um... And I just like the I just like the consistent tone throughout the film of the park and of the story and every everything blends really well together. It's very tightly paced. It's very well edited. So I, I yeah I dig this film. I I think that um, I was wrong on this one for sure, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with going back and watching these things and having a change of opinion. Now, I'm not blowing this thing. I'm not like, oh my God, it's fucking like one of the best slasher movies of the decade. No, definitely not. It lacks in areas that I feel like it should excel in to be a great slasher, but it's a better damn movie than I gave it credit for. So, anyway. <clears throat> um, 
So first off, this movie had six writers. Six. How the fuck does... I just don't get this. When I see this stuff, and I'm sure this is like rewrites and whatever, but how the fuck are there six writers on a movie like this? Kids go to a haunted attraction. A dude, like, follows them around, does some creepy shit, and kills some of them. The end. Like, what is it? what is it that you're writing that you need six people for? Like... One or two people at best should have written this movie. This is not a complicated script. You know, I watched like fucking Inception or something that was written by one guy. I watched this and it was written by six people. How the fuck? I don't. That just. I don't get that at all. Um, and all right. So yeah, you've got you know, all the girls in this movie are very attractive. Some some babes in this. Obviously, you don't see anything or anything. There's no nudity, but that's, I mean, I don't really care. I, I would definitely have not a complaint, but it's not really a complaint with this film. I just, there's no place for it in this movie. As I said, if it was there and it was gratuitous and they just like were in the haunt and like, uh, you know, uh, Bex or Brex, whatever the fuck that girl's name is, the one with the short hair that's like purple in this and she plays Bullet in The Killing. Um, Bex Taylor something. She was in the Scream TV series. If she pulled her tits out, like she, her and her boyfriend were going at it, and she like threw him out for a second or two or more, I would uh, I would not have an issue with it at all. Um, but as I said, it's just it's it's not really warranted here. It's not really I don't care. So that I typically am like yeah, throw me the tits. But it didn't really bother me here. The problem with the movie is the gore and more kills. We need that shit here. Um, and I like the opening with the girl being, you know, uh, left inside the haunt up on a meat hook with the other bodies. And then they say later that, th that she wasn't found for three days because they just thought she was part of the attraction. And it wasn't until people started to smell her to, that they realized that she was, that she was even missing. I, or that she was a, uh, a dead body. I, I call bullshit on this. <laughs> it just no there's no way like this girl went missing the parents would be freaking out they'd be checking the fucking attractions you know she would that's where she was last seen they did go through there with a fine tooth comb there's no way they'd keep the fucking thing open for like three days and then she would start to smell i just don't buy it i mean and who knows maybe that was a bullshit story and that wasn't even connected to the one in the opening and that was just the shit they were telling this girl to scare her that's possible also i just i don't know if they're trying to say that I, I just call bullshit but you never know crazier things have happened um uh, we get a first date in this movie and of course their friends are basically cock blocking them by thinking they're helping but being like oh she thinks you're hot and oh he's and, you know saying all this uh real full, straightforward shit to their faces which can work but typically it doesn't so and that's more that that just kind of comes along with the age of these guys which i would say is they're like early 20s i think is what we're supposed to believe they are and which they look like so yeah um but a first date here this would definitely be an ideal first date for me obviously and i like these i i went to i don't okay i shouldn't say i like these but i like that experience um, with other people I'm really lame at these haunted attractions but everyone wants me to go because they're A, either trying to get me to show some fear because they think I'm like dead inside or they want me there to protect them because they know I'm not scared so I have went to these a few times and you know the girls will kind of just like pin themselves to me as we walk through and they'll make me go through the front of course, because I'm just like, whatever, I, I'll do this. And then, you know, they just kind of, one girl in particular, I'll never forget, she just like clung to me and she was held, holding on to me. And she held me the entire time and she was pretty fucking adorable. And I was just like, can this never end? Can we just like go in circles around the song? But I think she would have probably had a heart attack at some point. I, I feel like if we didn't get out of there, pretty quick and then this like you know how they do the chainsaw guy at the end and he runs at you she took off when that guy came down she fell and she scraped her knees and her arm oh man 
Oh, man. I would have licked her wounds, though. Let me tell you what. Jesus Christ, that girl was uh, was cute. I didn't get anything, though. Well, she, you know, after that, I was I was her bodyguard for, for like, 10 minutes or whatever as we walked through. And then uh, we came out, and then, you know, she kind of was distant. And then uh, for the rest of the time, maybe because I didn't save her from the chainsaw guy. That's what it was. She scraped it. I was supposed to protect her, and I, I, I failed at my job. So she was like, I was going to fuck you, but now fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, all right, let's see. <clears throat> what was I going to say? Oh, good first day, yeah. Um, shit, I just like to go on any fucking first day right now. I don't even care where the hell it is. Um, I like how that dude's following her around, and then he's, like, th basically holding this girl hostage in front of her, and she's, like, trying to act tough. Like, I know it's all show, and she's like, just do it already, like, taunting him, which... I think is what attracts him to her. Like, he's, you know, like, he likes that she egged him on. And so he's, like, now, he's now, like, into her. So he's going to follow her around the park and just kind of stalk her Michael Myers style. Um, and I like how all that plays out. And that there's multiple people with that kind of outfit on. There's a very Halloween 4 moment when... She's inside that roller coaster type ride. Uh, it's not a roller coaster, but a ride, a haunt, a dark ride. And the guy's like sitting on the front of her car, which I just don't buy, dude. I think she would have thrown his ass off there, whatever. But it's a cool scene when he comes out and you're just like, dude, oh my God, this is escalated. And then like three other guys come out that are dressed in the same outfit. And I'm like, hey, I recognize this scene from Halloween 4. Um,. And I like how Loomis actually goes to shoot one of Michael, one of the Michaels. It's like, Loomis, you're losing it, bro. Literally, there's, n <laughs> there's obviously no chance that any of those guys are Michael Myers. That is just so fucking silly to me. Um, anyways, I don't care. I love, I love that damn movie. Um, but. There's an area where where people can touch you, which is uh, interesting. I think these do exist. I mean, I know there's that like that really stupid one that I actually talked a guy I know out of going to. He was gonna sign himself up for that that like extreme haunt thing. Extreme? It's not a fucking extreme haunt. You're just paying people to torture you until you give up. It is the stupidest shit I've ever fucking seen in my goddamn life, dude. If you fucking look into that and you have any interest in it, you're an idiot. You're paying people to just defile you and fucking... No. I forget what that that stupid thing is called. Um, but you, yeah, you, you, you guys, some of you know what I'm talking about. Most of you probably know what I'm talking about. I just can't think of what it's called. But no, do not ever do something like that. Um, and he was in the car with her. Uh, no, yeah, where he went out there. Um, ooh, the maps in the body cavity. That's a cool, that's a cool little thing inside that haunt. Like, that's another thing. That's what I liked is like a lot of this stuff. I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, that's cool. If I saw that at a haunt, that's super cool. Like, they're like maps in here, and it's like inside a guy's body cavity. Like, it reaches in, and then of course, it's like a a head behind it and the guy like comes to life that's great shit man that's great shit and then they have like the little creepy kid escorts that come out and escort them across the property that's really cool too um, and then they go through this haunt where the guys kind of separate from the girls um, and there's a and there's like a dead chick from a heroin overdose I just don't see him doing this one I just don't see him doing this one. It just seems in poor taste that they're going to have a guest that comes in. I mean, how many people know somebody who's died from like a drug overdose, especially like heroin? A good amount of people. <laughs> a good amount of people. So just, I don't know, someone just like junkie laying there dead from an overdose is like the main thing in the room. I don't know, maybe. But I like that the veins are all like different colors. It almost looks like something out of Joel Schumacher's Batman franchise. With like, uh, you know, Bane or something, where the it's just all neon veins coming out of the thing. That's what I thought of. I just I don't know for some reason I was like, would they would they have a fucking would they have a junkie overdosed on heroin in here? 
Maybe. Maybe. I'm not saying it wouldn't. I just, when I saw it, I was like, I don't know if I'd put that in there. <laughs> it's just too many people that would walk in there and be like, dude, fuck. All right, now I want to go home. My mom OD'd on OD. You know, something like that. I don't know. It just looks like a bad taste. But whatever. I, I wouldn't care. I just, when I saw it, I was like, hmm, I don't know. Um, and the, <clears throat> I like the grundle fly uh, reference here when the girl gets spit up on which is I just don't buy that they would throw shit all over you maybe but that's probably in the waiver like you know if you go to like the Ash the um, Evil Dead musical there's like a splash zone and they'll throw blood all over you um, so I guess this is possible but yeah just going up and like throwing a bunch of slime and shit but he's like oh you got grundle flied that was a badass. That's a great reference right there. That I just don't buy that this guy would know that, but whatever. I don't care. I still liked hearing it. Um, and then <clears throat> they go to the security guard, and they're like, hey, I'm scared, and some guy's fucking with me. And he's like, welcome to Hellfest. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. True. True. Uh, and then you got Bullet here. Um, and she gets the guillotine to the back of the neck. And I love that the guillotine comes down on her head and it only just like kind of slice, uh, like partially slices the back of her neck. Like he feels it and it's dull. So the guillotine doesn't even work. That was great, man. That's a great gag. And then like while he's down trying to fix the thing, uh, she gets up and, and runs out. And then uh, the dude chases her out and stabs her in a couple. Now, did they die? It's up in the air I don't know I think we're led to believe they died but unless you see somebody die on screen I just don't buy it so they, they could have lived. they could have lived I could see them I could see them have having lived and uh, let's see the <coughs> um, okay there's some ridiculousness here no doubt about it so Everyone sees this murder take place, so everyone starts scampering and, um, you know, to bolting for the doors. Then there's an announcement that comes over the intercom from Tony Todd's character, which is only in this film for like one second, and he's like, "It's time to exit the park," you know, whatever. And then they go into an attraction that leads them towards the exit, and they're in there by themselves. This Hellfest has like thousands of people there. They were all told to evacuate and no one comes through there, not the direction they're going or otherwise like backwards. There wasn't people that were ahead of them that were coming back out to run away and there wasn't people who were trying to run past them to get away. In that entire park, they got that entire haunt to themselves when everyone was told to leave and people were fucking running for their lives. That, I was just like, what the fuck? That is so dumb. <laughs> that is just so dumb. And I see no explanation for it. Not even, like, the workers who work there. Nobody. Because you could say, oh, well, maybe it was because this and... No, dude, come on. There had to be someone in there. Ridiculous. And, and, and going through that whole thing... They didn't run into one actor that was like on the ground or anything. I guess you could be like, oh, well, they were told to leave, so they got up and left. But as I said, no, they didn't run into any of them. Not one. Come on. That's fucking ridiculous. Um, ridi ridiculous, but whatever. Um, and then they use the lasers to their advantage. And uh, she hides behind one of the walls that's triggered by this, uh, by his feet crossing across the laser it opens it up and she stabs him that's a good move i like it the use she uses the other girl's bait she hides behind the wall he walks through it boom and uh, she comes out she stabs him good stuff i like that smart um you know but then later when the cops walk back through and they go to that exact area and we actually see their feet cross through the laser beam as they're walking through there that door does not open for them that's inconsistent and kind of silly but whatever um, and then, um, yeah, I mean, then, then we get the end, we get daddy, you're, you're home. And then he gives her that stuffy 
that that dude was trying to get for her, that he lost his life, the dude who got his head smashed in. He pulls that stuffy up out of his jacket and uh, gives it to his daughter. And she'll never be the wiser, man. She's, uh, she, she'll never know what that stuffy is. She'll never know that her dad's a killer. I mean, maybe he got caught eventually. They usually do, but um, I don't think she'll ever think that stuffy is anything as sinister as it is. Uh, I guess it's not sinister. You just know what I mean with the attachment on it. But I just thought that was interesting. She's going to have that thing in her room. She's going to have no idea some dude died to get that thing. I just thought it was funny when he pulled it out. I was like, hey, that's the exact one the dude picked out. I didn't pick up on that the first time. But I, at that point, I I pretty much checked out. But, um, but yeah, so he's still out there. Um, I don't think he'd go after these girls after this had happened, but maybe he would. Maybe, you know, they'll be in the paper. I wouldn't put them in the paper. That'd be pretty stupid. Like, the guy's still out there. Keep their names out of it. But uh, regardless, um, yeah, I think I got everything. But um, maybe, maybe not. I feel like I'm missing something. Mm, but, um, yeah, well... It's a good flick. I mean, you guys, I don't know. How are you guys feeling about it? Are you guys fans of this one? Are you like me? Are you wanting to give it a second chance now? Five bucks on Amazon. Um, and I think there's a pretty damn good price. So, um, yeah, I check. I mean, obviously, I bought it. So, I, I recommend it. And as I said, it's a great transfer. Check it out. Let me know. And uh, until next Slasher Sunday. Adios.